One of the most promising cryptocurrency networks that many, many people have underestimated over the time is Polkadot, a substrate-based layer zero blockchain network that seeks to solve some of the most critical challenges facing existing blockchain networks, such as interoperability, scalability, and security. Now, because Polkadot is a layer zero, its predominant feature is that it enables the creation of several independent blockchains called parachains that can communicate with each other in a frictionless manner while supporting the pathways to connect with blockchain networks. Polkadot currently sits inside the top 15 projects by size of market cap and has been well within the top 10 in the past. However, in saying that, Polkadot hasn't really hit its full potential yet as the parachains only launched at the very end of the 2022 bull market, meaning that the 19 active networks now in place are going to pull some serious demand for DOT by 2025. I commonly refer to Polkadot as a sleeping giant that is going to facilitate a lot of the interoperability solutions for the Web3 industry into the future. And that statement is supported by the important networks building on Polkadot right now. If you'd like to vote on what protocols we review next, please head over and stay tuned for a poll I tend to do most Sundays where we as a community vote on what is reviewed next. Now you can request a personal review as well by clicking on my link tree in the description. So with that being said, grab a coffee, sit back, relax, and pay very close attention as today we'll be going into a dive on Polkadot on a technical ecosystem and of course, fundamental level. So you will never have to watch another Polkadot video again. Now, first of all, let's gloss over the technical aspects as it's important you know exactly what you're investing in. Polkadot allows parachains to reach a maximum of 1,000 transactions per second, but in a few minutes, I'll tell you why they plan to upgrade this in a very major way. Now, the consensus on Polkadot is very technical, but all you kind of really need to know right now is that the blocks are finalized and consensus is agreed upon due to the combination of two protocols called Grandpa and Babe. Yes, I do know. It's very interesting acronyms to say the least. The Grandpa Protocol, though, allows Polkadot to have quite a fast finality time of around 12 to 60 seconds, depending on a number of variables. NPOS, meaning Nominated Proof of Stake, is the first layer of the governance in the Polkadot network. It determines which validators participate in the consensus process and earn rewards for validating transactions and creating new blocks. Now, the Polkadot network has another type of node called a nominator, which plays a role in consensus as they support specific validators and receive some of the rewards earned by their chosen validator. By leveraging both validators and nominators in the governance process, NPOS attempts to remove the plurocratic environment created by proof of stake and proof of work networks. The fees on Polkadot actually change to ensure economic sustainability, like ensuring users do not over consume resources while preventing DDoS attacks. The network uses a weight based fee model opposed to gas metering model like we see on Ethereum and other smart contract like networks. Right now, the average fee on Polkadot is around 0.015 DOT per transaction, which is more or less about 9 US cents. Now, the parachains orbit what's called the relay chain, or basically the heart of the Polkadot network, which is how the parachain says security, interoperability, and come to a global consensus. Parachains are their own networks, completely customized to the developers' needs and ideas, employing their own token economic models, use cases, and upgrades. Basically, they're just their own layer 1.5 blockchains that just simply leverage Polkadot. There are only 100 slots available on the Polkadot network for a parachain, with 42 of them currently being utilized. To successfully become a parachain, a starter network would need to win a special kind of auction based on a very fair and random set of rules that are coded into the actual network itself. Now, once a project wins a so-called slot, it gains access to the full suite of Polkadot features and can then start building its own blockchain with customized features. However, it is only guaranteed a spot for a maximum of two years before it will have to actually win that spot back again via another one of those auctions. If a project can't win a parachain slot, it can attach itself to the network still as a so-called parathread, which can be kind of thought of as a type of 
pay as you go parachain where the parachains themselves or in this case para threads only pay for the slots they use and don't need to commit to a semi-permanent spot now para threads can be useful for a variety of use cases such as load traffic applications experimental projects or temporary initiatives they can also be used as a stepping stone for new projects as well that may eventually require a permanent slot on the relay chain so you can kind of think of it as projects dipping their toes in the water. Now, one of the most important features of the Polkadot network is the XCM or cross consensus message format and XCMP, AKA the cross chain message passing. XCM and XCMP actually work together to enable cross chain communication and also interoperability within the Polkadot network and also in other consensus systems that also achieve finality to agree on the latest and correct state, which pretty much means it can connect to anything. Now, XCM defines the format and content of those messages that are sent between the chains, while XCMP provides the protocol for delivering those messages between the chains. You can imagine kind of XCM as guidelines for how messages are structured and XCMP as the deliverer of those said messages. Together though, they help ensure that assets and messages are exchanged seamlessly and securely between different chains on and also off the Polkadot network. But what I deem most importantly, these messages can be extremely complicated guys, allowing networks to interoperate literally like never before. Something we can all look forward to is Polkadot's plan upgrade to boost their TPS by up to 1000 times what it is right now, which will mean the network could reach speeds of 1 million transactions per second, get this, per parachain. Now the technique is actually called asynchronous backing and allows finality to also be reduced to a crazy low six seconds or more or less about half of what it typically produces right now. The upgrade will take place first on Kusama, which is Polkadot's canary net, the replica network to Polkadot where kind of updates and upgrades occur first. Now we can look forward to asynchronous backing soon as tests and audits are need to be completed first on the Kusama network. I'm Gabe from Crypto Ethics, and I'm going to be bringing you the ecosystem and connections section of these videos from this point forward, so let's get started. I created a map with all the partnerships and connections that lead back to Polkadot. On the right, we have some powerful venture capital firms. Two of them, Coinbase and Polychain, are actually invested in three Polkadot parachains, Asta, Parallel Finance, and Akala. Another investor is Pantera Capital, who backs both Polkadot and Parallel Finance once again. Polkadot has three main founders, Gavin Wood, Robert Havermeyer, and Peter Subban. Actually, two of them, Gavin and Peter, co-founded the Web3 Foundation as well, which is a very large company supporting the Polkadot ecosystem and most successful projects. Think of it like the Ethereum Foundation, but for Polkadot. The third and final founder, Robert Havermeyer, actually co-founded Hypersphere as well, which has investments in Asta, Interlay, and Parallel Finance. Chainlink has some connections here too because they are building on Moonbeam and partnered with both Polkadot and Ethereum. The investment firm Fundamental Labs is invested in Polkadot, Chainlink, and Binance, which I'll come back to in a moment. When it comes to Coinbase, they have their company and their investment branch as well. Fundamental Labs is actually invested in the Coinbase company. All the way back to Gavin Wood, because he and one of Web3 Foundation's advisors, Aaron Buchanan, co-founded Grid Singularity. And Grid is actually one of the companies behind the Energy Web token, which was an unexpected find during this research. One final investment firm, Fenbushi Capital, actually has Vitalik Buterin as an advisor, which is interesting because Fenbushi has investments in Asta and Parity, another company that Gavin Wood co-founded. He also co-founded the Ethereum blockchain, as I'm sure many of you know, and the Ethereum Foundation, which is actually the lead investor in Parity Technologies. So there are definitely still connections between Gavin, Vitalik, and Ethereum. In fact, to take that even further, a blockchain developer at the Ethereum Foundation by the name of Caesar Chad is the brand ambassador at Polkadot and also a developer advocate at Chainlink. I know it all sounds very complicated, but basically Chainlink, Binance and Ethereum all have a few connections to Polkadot and its parachains. Last but definitely not least is Blockchain Capital, one of the largest venture capital firms in crypto with connections to Visa, banks and high level companies. What's interesting though is Gavin Wood is actually one of their advisors. However, as you may notice, these connections are not on this map. That's because this is the free map which you can find in the description. I put a lot more work into a much more extensive map that is available for purchase. So if you like what you see, 
then check out the link in the description and you can buy the map that I'm going to preview on screen now, which also comes with a list of all the crypto and venture capital connections on the map. It is a very useful reference when considering Polkadot as an investment. Now, to summarize all of that, we have the specific connections. The founders, Gavin Wood, Peter Subban, and Robert Havemeyer. Some other cryptos that have Polkadot connections, Ethereum, Chainlink, and Binance. Finally, five very well-connected parachain projects, Interlay, Asta, Akala, Moonbeam, and Parallel Finance. Let's end my section with some of Polkadot's latest ecosystem updates and then a ranking from zero to 10. Recently, Manta Network won a parachain spot. It's a protocol driving on-chain privacy solutions across Web3. Interlay, the project I mentioned before, released its white paper. This project focuses on bringing Bitcoin to decentralized finance on Polkadot, which is a very important use case. So let's get to the rating. Polkadot has a lot of high-level financial connections and the ecosystem is massive, each parachain with its own set of connections, investors, and partnerships. I'm giving Polkadot a strong 9 out of 10. I base my rating on an average of three things, amount of connections, ecosystem size, and how powerful the companies are. So while Polkadot has a massive ecosystem and very impressive companies involved, a lot of the connections come from the parachains themselves, which is all connected back to Polkadot, but the Polkadot crypto itself could use a few more connections. That is the Polkadot ecosystem partnerships and connections section. Thanks for listening. I'll now send you back to Karen for the rest of the video. Thanks for the dive into the ecosystem, Gabriel. Now, as for the fundamental aspects, it's super important that you pay attention because this can be the difference between buying and selling a token. So we'll start with some of the basics. The market cap of Polkadot is currently $6.8 billion as it sits comfortably in the number 12th spot. The total supply of DOT is currently 1.28 billion tokens, which is broken down into 487 million tokens that are actually circulating, 644 million staked or bonded, and 157 million diversified into other non-liquid tokens. As you can imagine, these figures are growing year on year, as more tokens obviously entered into circulation, thanks to its steady 10% inflation rate. And kind of like while 10% may initially seem unnerving to a lot of you it is quite standard in networks that require nodes to run and secure the protocol as well as dish out those beautiful staking rewards now it's quite important to mention that this inflation rate can also be changed via governance proposals so just keep that in the back of your mind the max supply of a token display is nothing as there is no limit to how many tokens will possibly exist in the lifetime of the network when acquired the dot token allows users to vote on governance proposals stake to return passive rewards and can be bonded to parachains to support them in winning a slot auction other than these use cases, DOT can pretty much be used as a form of payment when transacting on the network and will obtain more roles as the network matures in perpetuity. As for the distribution of these tokens, a total of 10 million DOT were minted at launch and about half of that distributed and sold to early contributors. This was distributed in the following way. 30% were given to the Web3 Foundation, future sales were given 11.58%, private sale investors were distributed 3.42%, SAFT investors had 5% allocated, and half of this supply was given to auction investors. These tokens are now all completely vested, which means we can expect a linear release of tokens thanks to that steady 10% inflation rate. Now you might be wondering why there are roughly 100 times more tokens currently in supply compared to the original 10 million distributed at launch. Surely inflation wasn't that high in the past. And you'd actually be correct if you're thinking that because in July of 2020, Polkadot achieved its first on-chain vote where 86% of the voters decided to actually increase the supply by 100 times due to the way a dot token is actually denominated now this increase would actually mean the denomination of the dot token called a plank would actually be more feasible when compared to fiat now ultimately this change pushed the initial supply from around 10 million dot to the 1 billion or more or less that we are now kind of accustomed to now the only shock to supply will be the release of the initial parachains unlocking dot when their slot expires and due to the slots unlocking in sequential order, parachains that previously had to fight for a slot with millions of DOT tokens will most likely now be able to secure their position with magnitudes of less tokens, meaning millions of DOT will then be entered into circulation and kind of like these tokens might not be immediately sold upon unlocking, they will definitely be in the hands of the community who can then bond, stake and sell at a moment's notice. So just keep in mind that is definitely a possibility, but in all fairness, 
in future, and I'm talking 5, 10, 15 years from now, if Polkadot is still around, guys, you can most definitely expect that demand to be once again there because, well, there's going to be more than 100 projects trying to fight for a parachain slot. Now, in 2017, Polkadot raised a mind-blowing $250 million in their ICO rounds with names that Gabe has mentioned earlier being Polychain, IOSG, Pantera, and Kashikan with another $43.7 million raised in 2020 when the total supply was increased now as for polkadot's market cap dominance relative to the entire market it's been on a steady downward trend ever since the trail end of the 2022 bull market the dominance chart is a great way that we can find a project strength relative to the entire market's performance and in the case of polkadot it isn't doing as well as I'd like. Now these charts show us that the daily active Polkadot addresses are currently around 6,300 with a total of 1,400 new accounts being created. The 24 hour trading volume is currently $178 million which encompasses only around 8,600 daily transactions. Additionally, the social dominance has plummeted recently with a somewhat stable 0.2% average down to almost 0.1%. Now these metrics screen that Polkadot really isn't being used all that much right now and that the network is kind of overshadowed by other more established networks like mm. Ethereum, Polygon and BNB. Mm. Other networks you could say with a lower market cap and less trading volume are actually performing better in most cases such as mm. Near Protocol, Avalanche, Phantom and Cosmos. The one thing is however Polkadot has the second highest number of full-time developers in the entire space, of course, second to none to that of Ethereum and dwarfing most of its other competitors. This, in my opinion, indicates a new ecosystem and or UX slash UI that isn't currently appealing to most people. And look, both of these actually make a little sense because if you've ever used Polkadot.js, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Let me rephrase something I said at the very beginning of the video. Polkadot is very young as the parachains only launched towards the trail end of the last bull cycle only some 14 months ago. I do strongly believe with the insane interoperability and ecosystem built for a true Web3 future, Polkadot does have a lot to offer in 2025. I would though like to stress the importance of the asynchronous backing update and how it will add more fuel to the bullish 2025 fire. Just like Kadena launched a 30x in a matter of a few weeks, Polkadot 2 will find immense demand when the meme of a 100,000 to a 1 million TPS infrastructure network is blasted at the beginning of the next cycle. With all that said, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see my Polkadot price prediction and overall opinion, please watch this video up the top of your right-hand corner on your screen now. And remember to tune in next week for my review on a microcap gem called Saito. All that said, take care until then, guys.